So we're looking at vocabulary today, advanced vocabulary, and this is going to be relevant for the writing and the speaking. Okay, and we're going to be looking at the kind of different vocabulary that you need to use in different situations. Okay, so we're looking at some various aspects of vocabulary that you can see there and we'll explain them all as we go through. Um, and right at the end, we're just going to talk quite quickly about some different strategies for actually, you know, finding vocabulary, uh, storing it, producing it, um, and all of those different steps, okay? Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is what we call connotation, okay? Um, we're going to look at one example and then we'll go through exactly what that means. So if you look at that picture there, uh, if you could describe that in one word, one adjective, what adjective would you use to describe what you can see there? Okay, if we go, oh, hi, Mohammed, Mohammed's back. Yes, yeah, so we've got difficult, sort of hard work. Um, so the first one we can look at is, so if I say difficult, does that have a negative or a positive feel to it? If you say that something is difficult. Yeah, okay, so we've got number two or difficult. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a negative feeling, isn't it? Um, but if I wanted to express the same kind of idea, but to put it in a more positive way, how could I do that? Yeah, okay, Pollyanna's got it. So challenging or a challenge has a more positive, it's not easy, but we grow from it, we learn from it. So connotation basically means, does it have a negative idea behind it or does it have a positive idea behind it? And you know, being aware of the connotation of the words you use makes a very big difference in your essays and also in your, your speaking test, okay? So we're gonna look at some other examples of connotation. Um, so one word we could use to describe this picture is, uh, we're looking at the body, so skinny. If I say skinny, does that have a positive or a negative? Yes, that's very negative. It's, it's definitely, you know, um, not a good thing to do to describe somebody as skinny. But on the more positive side, what could we say? Okay, yes, I like slender or slim, very, very positive, okay? Um, and then we also have neutral words. So example, thin tends to be a more neutral version. So there's, there's kind of three categories that we're talking about here, okay? Um, but yeah, maybe fit as well, I suppose, could be um, another way of describing that, okay? So big difference between skinny and slim, uh, even though they have the same meaning. Um, oh, lean, Manali, that's quite a nice word to use uh, as well. Okay, um, so if we have a look at these, just sort of one word to describe the, the dress in these. Okay, we've got some very nice words there. Okay, some interesting ones coming up. Uh, and somebody wrote there vintage. So would you say that's a positive or a negative idea? Okay, good. So it's very, everybody wants vintage, vintage everything. Yes. Yeah? So, um, oh, I like snazzy, uh, Katerina. That's great. Um, so that's a positive. A lot of people put things like glamorous and classic. That's very positive as well. But um, yeah, if I wanted to be a bit more negative, um, how could I do that? Okay, old fashioned. Yeah, I think old fashioned is particularly what we're looking at. I guess costly is always also uh, a negative way of describing it, but more specifically, oh, obsolete. That's quite an interesting, it's not more about um, sort of maybe machinery than clothes, something like obsolete, but it's a very good word to use. Um, okay, oh, frumpy. Katerina, that's a fantastic expression. Um, so, and again, a very negative word to use to say that something is frumpy. Again, archaic doesn't really describe clothing. So it's a great word to use, but, but we're talking more like ancient there, um, maybe archaic script, 
something like that. So it has a slightly different area of use. Okay. Um, so if we look at the picture there, how would you describe this this woman? Thinking about an adjective. <laughs> Meticulous. Okay, very nice. So we got detailed, precise, uh, a stickler. Very nice vocabulary there. Okay. Um, what about if we said fussy? Very fussy woman. Oh, I like nosy. That was good as well. Yeah, so fussy, very negative way to describe somebody. Um, a more positive way of saying that. We already had meticulous, which I think was very nice. Um, curious, I think, could be positive or negative depending on the situation. Eager is quite fastidious, Poonam, very nice. Fastidious is, is lovely, maybe inquisitive. Um, so yeah, we actually went for meticulous, so very good, the person who wrote that. But fastidious, diligent, Arakan, that's very nice. Um, inquisitive, yeah, I think that's, that's slightly different meaning, but inquisitive could be considered more positive as well. Okay, also observant, Saima. That's a very nice word to use, and that has quite a positive meaning as well. Focused as well. Okay, how would you describe the man on this picture here? Okay, um, we're thinking more about his character or his personality. Okay, yes, we've got, that's a bit closer to it. Um, so yeah, a lot of you put confident. Oh, charismatic, I like that very much. Um, would confident be positive or negative? Okay, yes, yeah, certainly very positive. A more negative way, he's a little bit, um, a bit of a show off, yes. Arrogant, very nice, big headed, egotistical. Okay, very good. So a lot of you got um, arrogant, overconfident, Kathika. That's a very good way. So actually changing from confident to overconfident um makes it negative uh self-obsessed i think that's quite obnoxious <laughs> okay yeah that's a very good word to use um yeah very very good poised would be quite positive um okay hm the adjective because we're looking at adjectives here would be egotistical okay so yeah that's a good word pompous manali that's a very nice word to to use as well okay and again very negative, big headed, also very negative. Okay. Um, okay, let's have a look at the uh, next one. Uh, proud is quite an interesting word because it can be positive or negative depending on how it's used and, and the feeling behind it. You can be proud of your achievements, that's a very positive thing. But if you're, you know, a proud person, as opposed to humble, that would be quite negative, okay? Um, so, oh, we've got some very good words going up here. Sorry, so tight-fisted gold digger. <laughs> I love that one, that's great. Uh, yes, greedy, materialistic. We're getting a lot of very negative words, a miser, okay? Um, covetous, very nice, Lady May. Um, Gold digger is, is a very negative word. It's not an adjective, it describes a person, but it's, uh, yeah, I think that's a great word to use. Uh, acquisitive, Poonam, that's very nice as well. Penny pincher. So we've got some great words here. Um, so stingy would be considered, yeah, again, very negative, okay? Uh, avaricious, another meaning, but stingy is quite a common word to use. Um, it doesn't seem like a very positive picture, but, oh, Jennifer, parsimonious, I like that. How, how could you think of this in a slightly more positive way? Perhaps somebody who's just a bit more careful with their money. Okay, rapacious, there's some great words coming out here. Uh, okay, very good. Ericsson, I think was that. Uh, thrifty. So thrifty would just be someone who didn't, you know, spend money uh, without thinking about it. Frugal, Shane, very nice. Yeah, perhaps conservative. Um, so, yeah, you know, there are positive and negative ways to think about all of these. So some really, really good words coming up here, guys. Okay. 
So, you know, part of, you know, understanding the use of a word, it's not just, you know, the meaning, but is that word uh, positive or negative in its connotation? Um, you know, just looking up the translation of a word isn't necessarily, or probably almost certainly, isn't going to give you that information. So you need to see these words in context, uh, perhaps use an English to English dictionary rather than a translation dictionary because you do get more information there. Okay. So let's have a little bit more practice with this. Um, so in this case, we've got some sentences. We've got two options um, and we need to decide which option fits in the, sen in the sentence. Okay, very good, childish. Um, so are we choosing an, a positive or a negative word there? <laughs> okay, we're still going with the two. Yeah, it's definitely very negative, okay? Um, somebody put immature, so again, that would also be negative, but youthful or childlike would be quite a positive way of thinking about it, okay? So um, have a look at the second one. Which word? Um, oh, Pural, Jennifer, very nice. Jennifer's doing some amazing vocabulary here. Yes, definitely we need to use exceptional. This, it's not a negative meaning, okay? Um, so we've definitely got a positive word that we're using there. Okay, what about the next one? Okay, very good. Okay, so again, assertive would be a complimentary thing to say, it would be a positive thing to say, but pushy has a very, very negative connotation. Okay, very negative indeed. All right. So what about the next one? Think about the sentence, you have to look at the... Um, uh, dogmatic is more like sort of stubborn, is more like sticking to a particular way of doing things. So um, it's, it's quite negative. Okay, Ooh, we've got a bit of a variety here. Do we need to have a positive word or a negative word in this sentence? Look at the sentence. Yeah, it should be negative. Don't be. Yeah, so again, so don't be cheap. Okay, exactly. Uh, deep sea cheap is the negative one. Um, and so that's what we're looking at in this sentence. Economical is a positive word. Yeah, economical is good value for money, but cheap is, you know, not using the money that you should. Okay. Or yes, don't be stingy, Mohammed. That would work as well. Yeah. Okay. And what about the uh over economical could we say that be over i mean yeah i mean if you put over in front of an adjective generally but uh i it's not something that comes to my mind to say over economical to be honest um yes okay perfect fired because it's unprofessional conduct so you're fired it's a negative thing you've done something wrong but made redundant it's just you know that the company is trying to save money okay <laughs> you'd be terminated i think you, your contract is terminated amir if you're terminated that's that's a bit more serious okay um okay or removed yeah all right so again some more examples here of words that seem to be similar they might be there in a dictionary as meaning the same but actually they're quite different in the idea that they have behind them. Uh, dismissed Alexis, yeah, that was um, right. Um, sacked, Tran, take away the, the off, okay, just sacked, okay. All right, so that was connotation, so that's a very important aspect of vocabulary to be aware of. Do so you have a negative or connotation, um, the words that you use, okay. So the other thing that we're going to look at now is register. Okay, so again, this is very important, particularly the, in the IELTS because of the writing and the speaking that you need to do. Okay, so when you're doing the writing, if you're doing the academic module, you are always going to be using academic formal vocabulary in the writing. Okay, there is no 
instance where you would be using informal writing. If you're doing the general training module, task one letter, you might get an informal letter. And in that case, you would be using informal language. You would need to use informal language. So it would be very important. Conversely, in the speaking, you want to aim to use informal language. Otherwise, it doesn't sound natural what you're saying. Okay, so for the speaking, you should use informal language. For the writing academic version, always formal. General training, generally formal, but you may have an informal letter in task one. Okay. Um, offspring has a very specific meaning. I, I would be very careful about using that. It, you may well use it in the it, not in the right way. It's it's a bit technical almost rather than formal or informal okay so um yeah of these two words which one is uh formal shall we say okay yeah very clear so children is formal kids very informal so when you're writing your essay your task to essay doesn't matter whether you're doing general training or academic there's never a situation where you can use kids Okay, yes, you're right, Mohammed. Maybe you could say youngsters, you could say the younger generation, you could say adolescents if you were thinking more of teenagers, but kids is just not going to be a, a possible uh, option when you're doing the task too. Okay, um, so yeah, always formal for ac academic writing, there's just no option. General training, you may be more informal um if you have an informal letter um yeah you can talk shane you can say, talk about the youth you know so that is a, a generic term for young people so that works fine that's formal so you can use that in your essay okay um well we're gonna basically we're gonna look at how you know these things and the strategies at the end mary so um we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute juveniles Omar is, is good, but with a J. Yes, okay, it was just a typo. Um, minors has more of a legal meaning. So again, unless you were doing an essay on crime and punishment, possibly not a word that you would need to use, okay? Um, if you use informal words, it means that you're, you will lose marks in the vocabulary because it basically means you're not aware of register and register is a key part of vocabulary. So yes, you would lose marks for using informal words, uh, for mixing formal and informal words as well. Okay. So uh, let's have a look at some of these. So we're gonna give you uh, some informal words and I'd like you to give me the more formal option. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, many, Oh, is plenty, is plenty formal or informal? Okay, plenty is informal. Okay, so again, plenty is not a word that you can use in your academic writing. Okay, many, it's quite a simple word, but it's a formal word, so it works very well. Okay, um, yeah, various, Alexis, numerous, those all work. Um, if you use plethora, remember it's in a phrase, a plethora of, I wouldn't overuse it. It's not a very common thing for us to use, okay? Uh, but yes, a wide range of, a large number of those kinds of question, uh, uh, phrases work very well. Okay, um, what about this one? He said, sorry, we just want sort of one verb for this. Okay, yes, he apologized. You could also say he was apologetic, okay? So that works fine. Um, okay, how could you ask this in a slightly more formal way? Okay, very nice, Simi. Yeah, how are you? Works much better. Um, how you doing or how are things is still pretty informal. Okay, how have you been, Amagana? That works very nicely. Yeah, okay. All right, profits have gone up. What have you been up to is quite informal. 
Okay, yeah, so increased, risen, both of those work very, very well, okay? Um, but gone up is a little bit, sword is very nice, Swara, that's a great word to use in your, in your task one academic, okay? Um, what's better than talk about? Okay, good, yeah, so discuss much better than talk about, okay? Um, and using about to, to introduce a subject, what would you say? Okay, very nice regarding or concerning with regards to in terms of, uh, remember it's always terms with an S. Um, so we have a lot of formal ways of saying that. That works very well. Okay. All right, what about the next one? I totally agree is, okay. Okay, very good. Completely works very, very well. Definitely is also a little bit informal. Okay. All right. Um, I've, yeah, I firmly believe, we tend to say, but that works very well. I firmly believe. All right. What about, we've got two here. Okay, very nice. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, huge, massive, enormous, considerable. Um, large is better than, than big. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Humongous is a great word, but it's not a formal word. Okay, works brilliantly in the speaking, but it doesn't really work in the, uh, in the, uh, in the writing. Okay. Um, in the end. Okay, yeah, perfect. Finally, yeah, lastly works as well. Okay. And what about this one? This has come up quite a few times. Yeah, okay, in a nutshell, really nice expression, works well in the speaking, but it doesn't work well in your writing, okay? So yeah, to summarize, to conclude, in conclusion, any of those would work, but avoid using in a nutshell to introduce your conclusion in the task to of the writing, okay? It's too informal, okay? So register very, also very, very important for IELTS, okay? To get it right. Um, so if we think again a bit further about formal and informal, um, so we know that informal vocabulary is definitely not, you know, allowed, it's not acceptable for formal writing any kind of slang or idioms, things like that. What else do you think you need to avoid in terms of writing? Okay, very good, Sky. Yeah, if you're doing the academic writing, idioms do not work. No idioms, no quotes. Contractions, Nazia, also, that's something that you must avoid in the writing. Um, yeah, idiomatic expressions, Alexis, slang, Shane, that's absolutely right. Anything else? Um, yeah, we're moving on a bit, but yeah, metaphors, any of that kind of language. Also abbreviations, things like etc. doesn't work any at all in any of the writing. Phrasal verbs, very good. Yeah, phrasal verbs are in their nature informal. So we definitely want to avoid phrasal verbs when we're writing, but they're great to use when we're speaking, okay? Um, if you're doing the informal letter for general training, then, you know, you can use these informal phrases. We're gonna look a little bit more closely at idioms at a moment, so I won't talk too much about that. Um, Expressions, not Shane, if not if they're idiomatic expressions, you want to be really very formal, very precise with your writing. Okay. Um, well, it, it's not acceptable in the, in the IELTS letters. Okay. And, and to be honest, you know, it's totally unnecessary. Just give two examples or three examples. Yeah. So you don't need to do that. Okay. Um, like I'm in there. Um, so an idiom. So all of those are things that you need to avoid when you're doing your academic writing. Okay. As I've said, for the exception is the informal letter for general training task one. Okay. 
So um, let's do this, do a little bit more practice with this. So we've got a lovely, yeah, look, there it is right down at the end there. So we've got uh, a very informally written conclusion here. So we need to think about, uh, first of all, which words do you think we need to change? We're not going to do the formal version, yes, but what, yes, okay, stuff, guys, nutshell, wanna, okay, what else? You, written as the letter U, okay, yeah, awesome. <laughs> I love that, you wanna get an awesome score, okay, okay, good, yeah. What else? Just they go down a little bit further, more at the end. Yes, very good, Mohammed. At the end of the day, is another one of these very great for speaking, not good for writing. Okay, etc. Thank you. Good. So let's underline them. I think you've got most of them. I think we missed a bit, but that's definitely something you want to in avoid. Okay, so we're just going to look. Yes, I think someone said you had better. Okay, so those are the words that we want to avoid. Um, so now we're going to try and change them. So in a nutshell, you would say what? Yeah, okay, so this verse to summarize in conclusion to conclude. Um, guys. Okay, yeah, people, people works very well. Um, what could we change? It's a bit difficult. Okay, very nice. Yeah, somewhat or quite. Very nice. I like somewhat, uh, particularly. Okay. Uh, but quite also works very, very well. Uh, okay, there's stuff we can do. Any other things? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, a number of things or methods, yeah, or things like that. But, you know, that works fine, but stuff is definitely very informal. Um, I'd say that's, we've got a bit of a contraction there. Yeah, so just expanding it out, or yes, you could say, I believe that, or yeah, I suggest, in my opinion, Asmus, that's fine. Uh, you wanna? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you want to. Uh, somebody put something very good there. Um, an awesome score. Yeah, a high score works very well. Uh, an excellent score. An excellent is a good, nice, neutral word to use because things like great and fantastic, actually you really want to avoid using those kinds of words as well in your task too. Okay uh yeah okay so yeah you should okay it's better than you'd better uh at the end of the day okay it's not really at the end of the day is more like kind of you know ultimately yeah or you know yes generally speaking so it's after you've given various arguments. Yeah, exactly. And ultimately, generally speaking, all in all. Yes, very nice for a can. Um, and then what about etc.? Actually, and so on, I would also avoid. You know, it just doesn't mean anything. Just give another example or a more general example. Okay, so other types of informal languages. So avoid, etc., but also avoid and so on, okay? Yeah, various types, additionally, various other types of language, something like that, okay? Um, so if you want to give a few examples, give a few examples, don't say etc., don't say and so on, okay? It doesn't matter, just give two or three specific examples, it's much better. Um, that's a great expression, Rachel, and the like, but it's also informal. Yeah. Um, but it's a very nice expression to use. Okay. Um, yeah. And <laughs> those simply, yeah, X, Y, and Z. Um, uh, many, yeah, you'd have to say, yes, and many more. That would work as well, just to mention a few. Um, that works quite well as well. Okay. Um, so we're going to look a little bit more deeply into this. Um, so 
if you notice here, we've used you. So it's very common when you're speaking uh, to use you to mean people, okay, or, or one, or, you know, it's a general term. Uh, but again, it's informal, works well with the, um, yeah, with the speaking, but not with the writing, okay? Um, so we want to change that around. So yes, Farrakhan, you can use the passive voice, or you could say, um, yes, Ermac, you can say one. If you use one, make sure that you keep the same form. So you have to say, um, if one wishes to pass one's exam, you have to, you can't say one and then say his, or one and then there, okay? Um, yeah, so we've, yeah, people, we've gone specifically for candidates. If you can use a specific word, rather than using people, because it, you can end up saying people repeatedly throughout, then do try and use a specific word, you know, like candidates or individuals, or it could be in one way citizens or voters, or, um, you know, these, depending on the situation, there's different specific, yes, yeah, students or um, something like that, yeah. It's going to be different in different essays, but try exam takers works well. Yeah, examinees. Yeah, that works fine. Learners. So there's lots of group nouns you can use rather than just go people, 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 people all the way through. So do try and think of other ways of saying people more, more precise, but make sure that they're, you know, it's the right option for the kind of essay that you are using. Citizens work, sometimes it doesn't always work, yeah? I would actually avoid using population, okay? Population, we only really use population when we're talking about numbers. Um, and I do see that a lot in, in essays as a variation on people, but it doesn't really work, okay? Unless you are saying the population has grown, or decreased, but you're talking about the number, okay? Um, and then after that, so candidates, and then we can say they, okay? Rather than, so we're using the pronoun rather than uh, saying candidates again. And then sometimes it's better just to avoid it at all, so two, okay? Um, yeah, maybe it's, you're talking about students, something like that, yeah, okay? Um, so, Avoid using the informal you as a general term. Try and use some group word, okay? And a little bit more, okay? So getting quite technical here, but there are some verbs, they're not really slang or idiomatic, but they are not very formal and there are better uh, versions of them, okay? Um, so specific one here, and somebody already corrected this, so that was very good. So if students want to, um, okay, if I can aim to would be a very nice way of doing it, or would like to, Mohammed, yeah? So want, again, you know, it's not slang, but it's not a great word to use, okay? Um, and what about get? How could we improve that? Okay, yeah, so achieve, obtain, something like that. So get is one of those words that, there's always a better alternative, basically, okay, which, you know, will work in a specific uh, situation. Okay, um, what about make sure to? Okay, very nice, Queenie, ensure, okay? So ensure they use, and then you have to use the, the uh, pronoun after that. So ensure they use appropriate register. Um, so there's things like make sure, ensure is always better. Um, things like make it possible, enable, much better word to use, you know. So uh, it's not always a case of informal and formal, but sometimes there's just a more precise word that you can use, okay, in, in the situation. Again, I would avoid things like good and bad because there's always a better alternative to words like that, okay? Um, even though it's fine, Jameen, there's nothing informal about that. That's, that's a perfectly good word to use, okay? 
um, yeah, be aware of works very well as well. Okay, so let's have a look at some idioms. Um, so what do, what do these mean? So I was over the moon. Okay, yes, overjoyed, that's very happy. Okay, raining cats and dogs. What does that mean? Okay, heavy rain, Varun, exactly, or raining heavily. On the tip of my tongue. What does that mean? Uh, yes, very good. I'm about to remember for again. That's exactly right. Um, but it's almost there. Uh, yeah, you know, almost got the word, but you know, haven't quite got the word. Um, fed up. That's a nice expression. Jabber went blank. Um, yeah, annoyed, bored of the whole thing. Fed up. Yeah. Um, okay. Under pressure. Okay, yes, yeah, stressed, okay, or burnt out. Again, very good, Shane. Um, it's up to you. Okay, yeah, exactly. It's your decision. It's your call. Another very good word there. Um, and hard work is the key to success. Okay, very good, Mohammed. It depends on or the way to success. Okay, very good. All right, so these are all idioms, okay, because none of them have a literal meaning. You cannot translate these into a different language, like word for word, and have it mean the same thing. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, okay? Um, so, yes, they're all idiomatic. They can't be translated, okay? There is no key to success. It just means it's the, the path or the road to success, as people were saying, okay? Some of these though, and sometimes people go, oh, idioms, idioms are great. I'm gonna use idioms all the time. There's, it's very easy to overuse idioms, okay? And it doesn't sound natural. Okay, yes, certainly Jabba in speaking only, but even in speaking, don't just try and put as many idioms in as you can, because it's just not what we do. Okay, we don't use, I can go days and days and weeks without using an idiom. Um, so they're quite specialized. Um, colloquial language, informal language, yes, all the time. But idioms are a bit more specialized. So do be a bit more careful with using them. Okay, uh, don't use it so that it becomes unnatural. Okay. So let's have a look at how these work, okay? So we've got three options. Okay for both speaking and writing, okay for speaking only, and just don't use it, okay, at all. Um, so which ones were, do you think are okay for speaking and, and writing? Speaking and right, okay, G definitely. G works very well. Uh, what else? We've got a whole range of things coming up here. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, so E and G, I would say. Okay, um, what works for speaking only? Okay, yeah, C, D, F, we've got there. Okay, which ones? You're not going to like this. Which ones would you not use or should you not use? Okay, yeah, A and B. Somebody got both of them there. Okay, so I don't think I've ever said in my whole life it's raining cats and dogs. Okay, it's just not something, it's sometimes things become used, you know, they have been used so much, they become cliches rather than idioms and then just don't use it, okay? Um, it's pouring down, it's raining heavily, uh, it's hammering down, um, it's like a monsoon out there. There's lots of things you can say, but please don't say it's raining cats and dogs, okay? Similarly, over the moon, it's just been used too often, okay? Um, overjoyed, sounds great. Um, C, D and F. They're a bit more, you know, normal. We would use those more often. And E and G are formal versions, um, if you like, of the idioms. So 
they can work uh, very well. Okay. Um, so is the word cliche formal? Uh, yes, <laughs> just to be careful. So do be careful about overusing um, idioms, okay? We really don't. Informal language is great. Idioms can be a bit too much, okay? So uh, don't try and put a lot into the speaking. And they are never, ever possible, you know, for, the, for writing unless they're those sort of specific ones we've looked at there. Um, and um, very easy to misuse as well. You've only got to get one word wrong. You've only got to say, as somebody said to me in a test last week, raining dogs and cats. So it's not even the right expression. So if you're going to say them, at least make sure that you've got them 100% right. Okay. Um, very quickly on the strategies. Um, so find these words in context. It really helps with all of these areas like register and things that we've looked at. Then store those new words, interesting way, spider diagrams, things like that, okay? Um, don't think about words individually because we never use words individually. We always use them in a sentence, in a phrase. So understand all of these things that we've talked about with the vocabulary. Um, use the academic word list for your academic essays. Very, very useful. Okay. And then produce it. Okay. It doesn't mean anything when it's down in a vocabulary book. You've got to get it out there. You've got to use it, use it in sentences play with it and then you will be able to use it in the test okay thank you hey thank you so much for that Annalie. great presentation and uh yeah thank you guys for your contribution it was great to see some amazing advanced vocabulary there as well so well done um great great job uh so guys we have um, been answering some of your questions in the Q&A and I can see that there are quite a few more uh, uh, awaiting discussion. Mm -hmm. If you do have any further questions you'd like to ask, uh, if you can add them to the Q&A now and we'll start discussing them in a moment. Okay, so that's great. And thank you for the feedback, guys. That's, that's lovely to hear. I'm glad, glad you found that helpful. I know that a lot of our students, you know, like to focus on vocabulary. So we are planning to offer more vocabulary focused uh, lessons for you. Um, before we discuss your questions, I would just like to do a bit of promotion for a couple of the premium services that we have available on our website, IELTSOnlineTest.com. Um, we offer a writing evaluation service where you can submit your writing onto the website. One of our team of qualified examiners, it could be Annalie, it could be myself or another one of the team can review your writing. We'll give you very detailed feedback on your performance, your strengths and your weaknesses and the things that you can do to improve your band score. Uh, we offer a similar service for speaking as well, where you can go through a full mock test with the speaking examiner and uh, you can find out, you know, what's ho perhaps holding you back from achieving a higher band score. Um, I have put the links to that in the chat, uh, so feel free to check that out. There's a link to the YouTube channel and our Facebook there as well. And you can watch the recording of this session uh, on the YouTube channel. It should be up tomorrow. So, um, Annalie, I hope you can still hear me because mm -hmm. my, my screen has, has frozen. I think we have so many uh, students with us today that it's, it's overloading the Zoom. But uh, as long as you can hear me, that's great. I will. Um, get started then with, with the, one of these questions. Um, so, yeah, uh, the first question I have here, this is a really good question actually from mm -hmm. Jermaine, uh, which is how can we use advanced vocabulary in informal letters without affecting the informality? Mm. Uh, such a good, good question there, Jermaine. Um, yeah, so 
in that case, advanced vocabulary would be informal expressions, colloquial expressions, getting the right collocations. Um, so don't think of advanced vocabulary as just being, you know, very long or very technical words. Um, it's just the kind of basically the way it's described in the examiner descriptors is less common vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So that means that it's something that, you know, a lot of students wouldn't be able to use. So if you can use it, you're showing a, a higher level than, you know, than the majority of people. So mm -hmm. it's not always something technical, but informal expressions, uh, collocations would be the way to get the right to get a very high score for vocabulary in the general training letter. Definitely. Yep, I would agree with all of that. Um, I'd also say that we do have a lesson on our YouTube channel focusing on informal letter writing. And we look at some of that informal language that you can put in that can still you know, help you achieve a high score uh, for the vocabulary. So it might be worth taking a look at that lesson as well. Uh, Jermaine, thanks for that. Uh, let's see, uh, Sachin uh, in the chat is saying they're taking their writing exam this Saturday. So Ooh. best of luck, Sachin. Yeah. Uh, and Furkan as well, and Amir, so yeah. good luck, yeah. guys. Good luck. And I believe, I can't read your name, but I believe it's uh, you're from Korea, judging from the script. Uh, mm. You're saying your test is tomorrow. Ah. <laughs> oh my good. goodness, good luck. Good luck, good luck, yeah. Uh, let's see. So our next question, um, if I can see this on the screen, mm -hmm. is, is it okay to use um, in a nutshell instead of at the end of the day? I think that's your question, Omnia. Um, ah, is it or eventually? Is mm -hmm. it okay to use the word eventually instead of at the end of the day? doesn't have quite the same meaning. I would say the formal version of at the end of the day is um, either generally speaking or all in all or ultimately works very well. Eventually means after a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So you're actually looking at a different meaning there. Uh, it is formal, but it's, it's not a version of in a nutshell. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, I'd say you're probably more likely to use eventually um, when if you were describing a process, mm -hmm. maybe a natural process mm -hmm. in task mm -hmm. one. So, you know, water falls on the sea and is eventually, um, you know, uh, turned into water vapor, something mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a very longer, slower process. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, excellent. Let's see. Uh, Couple of questions here. Um, one from Mary, uh, who is asking, how can I know when a word is formal or informal? Mm -hmm. um, well, so one thing is the academic word list. Um, this is a great resource for finding formal words, academic words, which will work really, really well in your essay. And it's also the kind of words that are useful in all kinds of essays, whatever the topic you know, things like impact and drawback and, the, you know, those kinds of words. Um, the other way is you need to see these words in context. Um, so, you know, if you're reading, you know, a high quality newspaper, as we put up there, it's going to be academic vocabulary. Um, if you're reading a low quality newspaper, you're watching a television program, um, you know, a comedy on television, a film, that's going to be informal language, okay? Um, to find the academic word list, really all you've got to do is, is put it in search and you will find it very, very easily. There's lots and lots of websites that have that, okay? Um, yeah. But, you know, look for different contexts. Also get an English-English dictionary because that will tell you the register of the word. Um, and so that's another way to check it, okay? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's great. I've just seen a couple of really nice examples of that kind of informal idiomatic language in the chat. So um, someone said, break a leg mm -hmm. uh, with your test, right? Uh, yep, uh, means, you know, good luck, do well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, was it Radoslava said, fingers crossed? Mm-hmm. You know, this is again, idiomatic language, uh, very high level, informal. Mm. You, you wouldn't use it in the writing test, but I think that would go down pretty well in the, the speaking test if you could use them appropriately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, in the, in the general training letter informal, you could say, oh, you know, I get my results tomorrow, fingers crossed, um, yes. and that would be great, yeah. you know. Um, so that's a way of getting that high level um, score in your vocabulary informally. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see, we have a question <laughs> No walk here. in the park. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's only when people start to suggest them that you realize how common this kind of language is. Um, it's almost invisible for a lot of native speakers, mm-hmm. but it is, it is there and it can be confusing. So, yeah, well done. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, We have a question here from Abdikani about word repetition. You know, is there a limit on how many times you can repeat the same word or should you always be trying to, you know, Mm -hmm. use a different word each time rather than repeating? Um, I mean, there's no sort of limit. It's not a, a you know, specific number or something like that. But the, the examiner is basically looking to see, do you have a good range of vocabulary? Um, or are you depending a lot on the same words? Um, you know, these kind of more basic words. So, for example, beautiful. People learn beautiful very early on in studying a language and you can use it a lot. But if you can only use that word, then you've got a very limited range. If you can use spectacular, breathtaking, amazing, serene, tranquil, then you have a very wide range and clearly you've got a much higher level. So, you know, it's not like a numbers game. It's, it's more about, you know, showing, impressing. I think Jennifer's asking, you know, you will impress the examiner by showing a good range of vocabulary. But at the same time, make sure you're using the words that are appropriate. Um, don't use a word, a new word for the sake of having a synonym when maybe it actually isn't something that we would use or it's the wrong register. Um, so there, there's a bit of a balance you need to get there. Definitely, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think it's um, one of the most common errors that I see is students trying to use too much complicated vocabulary and they don't use it quite accurately. And then that impacts the clarity of their message, which lowers the whole um, score. So often it's a case of trying to be very simple and clear and adding in a few more complex Mm -hmm. items that you're 100% sure Mm -hmm. are appropriate. You don't need to change, you know, every word. It's fine to to repeat them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, let's see. Uh, Quick question here from Radoslava. Will Will I lose points if I use more words than the word limit? No. No, it's a minimum word limit. You must write over the word limit. You are only going to lose marks if you uh, write less than the word limit. So that's not something to worry about. Um, Don't write too much, but but you have to write more than the than the word limit. Okay. Uh, I I just want to answer a question from Furkan because I know (coughs) his test coming up. Um, Yes, you do need to structure your writing, Furkan, for the essay introduction paragraph on one side of the uh, issue, paragraph on the other side of the issue, conclusion. Okay, Mm, very briefly, in a nutshell. (laughs) Exactly, and there's actually a related question here in the Q&A from Coco, who's asking, do I have to write more than one sentence in a paragraph? Um, Yeah, your paragraphs are going to be, you know, each paragraph should have a central topic. Um, So, you know, probably four or five sentences, six sentences in each paragraph, but don't have any individual sentences because that will be very confusing for the examiner. Yeah, yeah. I would say perhaps the one (laughs) exception to that could be at the start of 
um, your task one when Ooh, you, yes, if it's the, the academic task one, you could write one sentence mm -hmm. to introduce the, uh, the graph or the chart or the process, paraphrase that one, one sentence there as the introduction should be fine, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as you said, Annalie, I think every other paragraph should be more than mm -hmm. one sentence. Yeah, Absolutely. great. Excellent, guys. Well, I'm afraid we are going to have to wrap up just there and um, we've run out of time for today's session but thank you so much for joining us uh, today it's been a lot of fun and thank you Adelie for presenting on on today's topic uh yeah thank you everyone good luck <laughs> Cheers. Um, we just before we go, um, I'm trying to put the links to our YouTube channel and our Facebook in the chat. If you could check out the recording on our YouTube channel when it's up uh, tomorrow, if you could subscribe or give us a like, that would be amazing. It helps us to keep offering uh, these lessons for free. Um, I saw Amal asking, do we offer individual lessons? Uh, that is something we can offer, Amal. So if you want to get in touch via the website, ieltsonlinetest.com, um, we can discuss that with you further, okay? So for the time being, uh, we'll say goodbye and we'll hope to see you again in another lesson soon. So thanks very much. Cheers, Anna. Hi, guys. Yeah, we've run out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Great, Great work. So, yeah. Okay, bye-bye, uh, guys. Ciao. Thanks. And best Ciao. of luck Ciao. with your tests, everyone. See you soon. This may take a little while to, to close, Annalie. <laughs> Talk it, among yourselves. Yeah, yeah. The, the what Zoom. are you having for dinner tonight, everyone? Yeah, certainly. <laughs> I think I ended up having pasta <laughs> uh, last time. Okay. Yeah, I did as well, actually. Nothing as good as any of the dishes that were being mentioned when we were talking. There were, there were some very nice, very nice suggestions last time. We've got some great Alfie design. We've got chow. We've got... Yeah. Um, Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Pounded yam. Wow. Pastries, Amazing. falafel, carrot soup. Stop it. Au revoir. Exactly.